Ladies and gentlemen, coming to you live from Detroit Motor City, here to perform his first gospel hit single, To Be With My Lord, from his hot and popping for Jesus CD. Put your hands together for the Prince of Gospel Music, Saint Paul! Hi everybody, I'm Carmel Brown and I have the distinct pleasure of interviewing my friend St. Paul, the Prince of Gospel Music, who was hot and popping and rocking for Jesus. And what I'm holding in my hand here is a wonderful issue that my friend St. Paul has been uh, featured in and it's the Urban Connection magazine, volume eight. So we want to shout out to the publisher of that magazine. And we're just going over this wonderful article. Uh, first of all, before we get started, let's just meet my friend St. Paul. St. Paul, say hi to your fans. Hello, Saints. How's everybody today? Um, now, I want to read an excerpt of this magazine, and, and this is just basically just a little piece of that. It's a synopsis of what St. Paul is all about, okay? St. Paul's life has been far from a fairy tale. He has endured many hardships physically and mentally along the way that others couldn't imagine going through. He has grieved the loss of his mother, who has been his strongest support system. He's facing life with a smile on his face and a strength that is unknown to many. He pours his heart out through his music as he expresses his love for his mother and for the Lord. He is a man that truly loves to help, support, encourage, teach, and strengthen others through his life and songs. And this is really awesome. Now, I just want to ask you, St. Paul, how did you get started in gospel music? Well, I started out performing, uh, not performing, I started out singing at New Harmony Baptist Church uh, when my mother adopted me at the Todd Phillips Children's Home. She took me to New Harmony Baptist Church and I started singing with the choir. Now, was music something that you were always interested in or was it something that, like, how did your family take notice? Oh, it wasn't my family. It was the uh, children's home I was placed in. Wow. I was raised at first around uh, nuns in a Catholic home. Wow. And they used to sit me up on top of the stools when I used to sing high soprano or whatever. And they took notice of me singing. Uh, so when I made it to my mother, Mrs. Amanda Glenn, she adopted me from the Todd Phillips Children's Home. And they noticed the talent that I had to sing. So she nourished it and sent me to voice lessons, piano lessons, where I studied at Orchestra Hall here in Detroit. What helps you to stay focused and grounded? Oh my goodness. First of all, Jesus, who is the head of my life, and then my mother, Mrs. Amanda Glenn, because she put so much into me when nobody else wanted me. You know, she adopted me from the Todd Phillips Children's Home, sent me to voice lessons, piano lessons, and she never, ever gave up on me. So she is my strength today, and I sing, and I promised her that I would always sing, and I would make it in this business. I promised her I would always honor her with the song One in a Million mm. because I used to honor yeah. her at the different churches and events. So, you know, as she took her last breath, she passed away in my arms and um, I knew she was going home to be with the Lord. But it was the most wonderful experience I had ever experienced. So, yeah, she's my strongest support, that's for sure, still today. Through your music, what message are you trying to convey? The message I'm trying to convey is that we didn't come here to stay. This is a gospel single, my first gospel single, entitled Hot and Poppin' for Jesus. Um, my mother was 93 years old, and she had made up in her mind that she was ready to go home to be with the Lord. And so I wrote a song, and it was entitled Hot and Poppin' for Jesus to be with my Lord because she was tired of the sickness, she was tired of the affliction. There was plenty of good room up there in heaven, and there's, there's a God up there, and she believed that. I believe that. So. I basically wrote the song to uplift people and let them know that we didn't come here to stay. We are just here on Bower Time. Now, you've been an inspiration to so many people. Who inspired you musically? Mm. Mrs. Aretha Franklin. Um, and then, you know, Prince, Mr. Kirk Franklin. Wow, yeah. You know, singers like that. Um, those are the people who really inspired me to sing today. Now, I know that you have been around Aretha Franklin for many years. Uh, you even did her hair. 
So what was your experience like with her and what role did it play in your career? Oh my goodness. Uh, yes, I started doing Aretha Franklin's hair uh, back in the 1980s and I did her hair for Jumpin' Jack Flash um, with Whoopi Goldberg in the movie. It was like a sequence to the movie. A Good Morning America, Emily Jess Showcase, uh, Vogue Magazine, um, Jimmy Lee video. As a matter of fact, I started in a video with Aretha Franklin as an extra for Another Night video and eventually made it to American Music Awards, doing her hair for American Music Awards as she performed. Um, working for Mrs. Aretha Franklin was the most wonderful experience because she taught me how to handle my business and to be about my business. And if you're not gonna do it right, don't do it at all. Mrs. Aretha Franklin, don't play. So today, St. Paul, don't play. What is the story behind this microphone? Well, this microphone is very, very special to me. Actually, this microphone here is covered uh, with Swarovski crystals from my mother's purses. Uh, her church suits used to wear the church. She used to always like to go in um, zirconia and crystals uh, on her hats and her shoes. And um, I stripped her hats and her shoes when the Lord took her home and put them on my microphone so that I would always have her on stage with me. Start spreading the news I'm leaving today I want to be a part of it New York, New York So I used to do a lot of modeling, modeling for City Warehouse and throughout the city of Detroit. Um, that's really when I came up with the idea to design my own shirt because every time I go out to perform, people always ask me when I get off stage, where did you get that suit? Where did you get that shirt? Oh my God, you smell so good. So why not come up with my own company, my own fragrance, my own line of, of clothes, shirts, and suits? So, yeah, so we're starting out with the fragrance. St. Paul Experience is what it's called. If you haven't experienced it, experience St. Paul. And find them a number one. I've been in a few commercials uh, for the locally here, for the nightclubs here in Detroit. I used to be in a play, Broadway, it was like a Broadway play where we went from city to city singing and dancing. Um, my dream and my goal is to touch the hearts and souls and minds of every human being that I possibly can with my music and to um, inspire the young people and make them understand that we did not come here to stay, you just here on Bauer Time. My dream and my goal is to make it to Wendy Williams, Oprah Winfrey, Ellen, Ellen TV show, that would be awesome. What else you have going on besides your music? Well, I've come up with a fragrance called St. Paul Experience. Um, it is very fruitful smelling, very fresh scented. Uh, it's for the entertainer in you. Uh, right now, we're trying to come up with a promotional ad shooting a commercial for that Pacific Cologne. Um, I also came up with a shirt, and it is a white French cuff shirt. It comes in many colors, but I prefer white when I'm on stage. I, I just got to be at my best crisp white. Um, and it's the St. Paul Collection. So I've designed that shirt and I designed the fragrance for the entertainer in you. The coffee mugs um, are uh, very, very nice and they also have the picture from the CD entitled Hot and Poppin' for Jesus on it, with me on it. And they are also covered in Swarovski crystals mm. because I love that bling bling once <laughs> again. So if you think that you are hot and poppin' for Jesus, by all means, get you one of those coffee mugs.
I want people to remember me as a man who had changed his life and who celebrated life, um, who live and let live, a person who brought something new to the table. St. Paul didn't care about what nobody said or what nobody thought. He did what God set out for him to do. And that's how I want people to remember me. Got a holy ghost wrapped around my feet. Got